Well, how's it going, everybody? Uh, today is actually Monday, and this video starts off a couple days ago over in the shop with me and Wes building a silage rig to go on the front of the Puma 185. Uh, real quick, let me turn you around so you don't stare at me and you can watch what we're doing. So we're mixing this afternoon's load. We're actually loading the grass silage right now. I got everything else in. So I get 4,200 pounds of uh, silage here. So like I said, it starts off in the shop over there. And what the deal is, about a week and a half ago, we just decided to build a uh, silage rig to go on the front of the 185 uh, so we wouldn't have to push silage with the little dozer and it could be more of a, a one-man show on the pile so um, Wes made several phone calls to different places uh, we, you know we kind of came up with an idea of how we wanted to do it and then um, I think one guy told him that he would build one but I, I, we kind of think it wasn't quite like what we wanted but he said it would probably be somewhere around $3,500 for him to build one. And then um, uh, Wes called another guy. And then that guy uh, was super interested in it, uh, kind of excited about it. I guess he's got several patents under his name and uh, he just got really excited about it. So what he offered was he would order the metal that we were talking about. He came up with a few ideas on his own. And then also he uh, offered that he would cut all the metal uh, because whatever he has in his shop, it would be super easy for him. And really it only took him like two hours to cut the metal. So, um, And he actually delivered the metal here to the shop and laid it all out in like a puzzle. And all me and Wes had to do was put it all together and tag it all and start welding on it. And get it all squared up. So with that, uh, right now, uh, counting a roll of wire for the wire welder uh, and uh, the plate, the attachment plate, uh, Wes got that off eBay for I think about 200 bucks. So what we have in, into this right now without counting our time is about $1,500. So um, that's where this video is going to start off starting to tack that together and get it together as of right now we are I would say three quarters of the way through with it um, so maybe in the next video it'll be done with and then from there I think uh, we went and uh, the th I guess three three generations worth of us um, is me Wes and my grandfather uh, went rode around in Wes's truck and looked at the sorghum and then we were also showing him the, the fork that we're building or the rake <clears throat> and then from there uh, would have been yesterday morning um, we hooked up the tire shooter and uh, put about 800 sidewalls on this pile here so we actually almost not quite but almost have this pile uh, blacked out now so um, and what I mean by blacked out is uh, it's almost completely covered with either tires or sidewalls uh, so in that part I, I describe how the tire shooter works and then you get to see it in action a little bit um, Went ahead and did that because I was a little bit afraid that it might not uh, Work out too much when we go to cover the pile of the sorghum um, Just because it's you know, it's a really busy time and there's not really any time to play around so um, Decided to go ahead and show what it how it works uh, now while I had a little bit of time so anyway um, and then a sorghum update this over here right in front of us right now I mean it's over my head it's probably six and a half seven foot tall right now and then uh, a week from today is when we're planning on chopping it so uh, the majority of it looks like that there's some that's shorter and um, you know for whatever reason it's, uh, there's probably the shortest stuff's about waist high right now but there isn't much of it um, all right, I'm down to the last 500 pounds. I just got to clean this up a little bit and then uh, put, put the 536 pounds in the wagon. So uh, we're going to go ahead and roll into the rest of this video. And then uh, I don't think I have a, uh, the original type of ending that most people have to these videos. So I'm going to thank you in advance for watching. 
and we'll see how the next one and uh, all that good stuff. So, yeah, let's go ahead and roll into the video then. Oh, okay. 
All right, we're over here at my grandfather's house right now. My dad just went in to get him. Uh, we're gonna go out and look at the sorghum. He hasn't looked at it in probably about a week or so. So uh, just figured right now it's 95 degrees and humidity's or the heat index is over 100. So might as well take a few minutes, ride around in the air conditioner and um, take him out and look at the sorghum. But um, so in 77, uh, in the year 77, they moved, or at least in 77, they bought the land here that the, the actually the dairy barn's sitting on. Uh, but they moved from California, uh, from Orange, California, to here around that time. And uh, in California, he was an electrician. Um, and when they got here, uh, he, he did a little bit of electrical work, and then in 81, they started the dairy. So. Or no, 82, my bad. I think it was April 9th, 82 is when our license started. But um, um, anyway, so we're just gonna go take a little drive, look at the sorghum, see what he thinks about it, and then we'll get back to work. What do you think? Look pretty good? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's really coming, uh, about a week, Yeah, weeks, 10 days? Or, yeah, 10 days. Turn off Sixteen? Or sixteen all together, right? Oh, So we're back at it now. We're running the ripper right now. Uh, yesterday we got the new shanks in because the old shanks were wore out and uh, got those put on late yesterday afternoon. It only took about 45 minutes to put them on. And then um, so we decided to come out here this afternoon and, and rip this field here. This is field number six. Uh, it's right behind the feed lane and it does get quite a bit of manure all to it just because of how close it is and when we're in a bind it's easy to get to so I'm out here ripping it and Wes is hauling uh, manure to it right now and um, you can kind of see what it's doing we're going about eight inches deep with these new shanks and it's a little more aggressive than it normally is just because the shanks are new and um, uh, the shanks are new and they're not as smooth. They're a little more coarse, so it's being a little more rougher with the ground. But yeah, so it's got a blade on the front and then a shank in the back. The blade makes a little slit so that it's not such a, a force for the shank to go through. And um, uh, then when the shank goes in about 80 inches deep and just kind of opens the soil up aerates it and allows uh, water and you know we got manure or whatever going in to uh, uh, to get down into the soil instead of running off but with the um, it also helps allow the roots to get down in the ground too if the ground's compacted but uh, anyway that's what we're doing right now and we got a couple of things to do after this I'm almost done here so we'll get this done and then move on
All right, well, it's Sunday morning now. It's like 11.30. Uh, just finished up with everything. Well, I haven't finished with everything. I finished up with the normal stuff, normal morning stuff, um, which seems like this was the earliest we've ever gotten done in a long time. So um, what we're going to do, well, there's some there in the front. Uh, the guy that drives the trash truck, you know, to pick up the dumpsters, uh, when we were unloading these sidewalls, he pulled in and ended up having to wait because the truck was in his way when we were unloading. And then he asked if we needed any more. I was like, well, yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Um, so then um, I guess because of the Corona deal, he had a couple kids that were just sitting at the house. And then I'm not sure where he got the tires. There's some semi tires, some car tires, uh, but he cut out the sidewalls and delivered about 800 of them yesterday. Um, so what we're going to do with them is we're going to scatter them across this pile here, which I did just cut the plastic back again last night. Um, and we're going to leave all these big semi ones that are all bundled together. We're going to leave them alone for the sorghum pile. But I uh, thought right now would be a really good time to explain the tire shooter. And then that way, maybe when we do the pile of the sorghum, uh, you can just watch it. And because that's uh, covering that pile is a little more, I'm going to say, chaotic and a little more uh, tiring and things like that. So to be able to stand around and, and uh, explain what we're doing is a little harder to do. And then, like, when we covered this pile, there was four guys. And it was me, Wes, me, Wes, Jeremy, and another guy. And, well, really the three of us did all the work. And that other guy, he's no longer here. So, um and then I had uh, Case and Allie, which, you know, Case is eight years old and Allie's 13. And uh, basically all they had to do was uh, pull the plastic and stand on the corners and things like that. Uh, so this tire shooter that we're about to go hook up, uh, let's go ahead and go hook it up and then I'll talk more. All right. So I had to pull over here and wash the couplers off. They had crap all over them. But uh, so here's the tire shooter. We weren't really planning on getting one. But our neighbors uh, were going to get some. Our neighbors were going to get one, and then um, uh, another neighbor was going to get a, uh, get one. And then they called and asked if we wanted to get one. And then that way, you know, we could all bring the shipping down, or the shipping costs down. So we went ahead and decided to get one. And then plus, like I said, with uh, the, the less people that we have, or the few people that we have, it makes it a lot easier. So you get a 23 foot reach with it. It's got this chain on it. And then it's got these little deals. So basically you run this up the center of the tires and then you can actually roll it back and pull the tires on. And then when you get over the pile, you can shoot them off. So it works off the third function on the wheel loader. And then so right now those uh, sidewalls, they got, some of them got bailing twine and some of them got straps on them. So we'll get all that cut off and get them put on the shooter and then I'll pull up there and, and shoot them off onto the pile and then now I can spread them out. <laughs>
got it loaded up again here. Um, the only thing about driving this, or with this on here, is your normal moving the steering wheel to maybe move the bucket six inches one way or the other is like two foot all the way out there on the end. So it takes a little bit to get used to on driving it and trying to line it up to go through the tires and not hit anything. I mean, it's a good ways out there right now from where I'm sitting. 